Yo, 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 I want to welcome y'all to another episode of For the Culture, man. This one here is about the district, man, the District of Columbia. That's right, Washington, D.C. We got one of the top dogs out that city tapping in with us right now. We got Ears to Christ in the building, man. Yo, Ears, tell the people a little bit about yourself, bro. This is the Christ type of DC Finals gangster. You dig? And I'm from the Northeast, Trinidad, from Washington, DC. I grew up on 16th Street. That's where I got my name from. Made all my money, my millions. Me and my nigga Andre Tank Johnson, my best friend. Tell the world how you got your name, man. How did Is the Christ come to be? When I was little, I had those Spark Ears. Like Dr. Spark, my name's Spark like that. Everybody started calling me Spark Ears. As I got older, they dropped the Spark off call me ears. As I got older, they dropped the ears and called me E. Once I went you on know, that slave plantation, did some time, did some research, studying, came back home, found myself, realized I'm under my own rulership, you know, so I named myself Ears the Christ. Hyphen DC Finders Gangster. Christ is a Greek word, mean anointed. I say DC Finders Gangster because I'm one of the dudes that still done it, did it, still doing it, Went to jail, looked at a life sentence, overcame that, didn't rat, didn't tell. So I label my own self is a crazy hyphen DC finest gangster because I don't look for another man to give me my title because I'm under my own rulership. That's how I came out with that name. Tell us how it was growing up in DC during the 80s and the 90s. Just paint that picture for people, say somebody in Brazil that don't know shit about DC, man. Just paint that picture for us how it was in the 80s and the 90s, bro. Yeah, back in the 1980s, man, it was love. All love, you know, fun times. Everybody out there doing them. I come up in the household. I'm the only boy and the youngest. I got two older sisters and a mother. I never wanted to see them struggle and want for nothing. So as a young kid, man, I went out there, man, pumped gas, curry groceries, went to people's drugstore, stole a little jewelry, one of those corners selling it. Make sure my mother and them had food, a lot of food on the table, not just the bare minimum of what the government was giving us, food stamps, ETC. So as time went on, you know, I'm watching older guys hustling this, that, and that. I'm trying to see how they hustle, watch them hustle. They're telling me stay in school, don't sell no drugs, don't be like them, be better than them. Put these gloves on, little nigga, I'm show you how to box, protect yourself, learn how to fight. This, that, and that. So we did that every time I go past, they make us put the gloves on me and my little homies to fight ETC. And as time went on, we started stealing. Me, my nigga Dream, and our little crew selling clothes. We was dressing so good, all the drug dealers thought we was hustling, but we really wasn't hustling. So one point in time, we started hustling and selling PCP. All right, my, my next question to you is, is um, tell us about Tank, man. Who was he and what was your relationship with him? Dre was like a, a big brother to me, a father figure, a mentor. You know, he had my best interest of hunting. One no shady shit, none of that shit, good man. So your ears was like Poe Tank's plug back in them days? I say yeah, but no, because at the same token, we really ain't had no plug. We fuck with New York niggas from Brooklyn. We had cut them off, started fucking with um Echo Cousin Pookie. Mookie, I meant over Southeast. You know what I'm saying? So um we was fucking with anybody had some shit for real that can serve us. And the shit was decent. We ran across Kirk, he turned us on the Al Poto Rat. We went to another plug, was the Columbia. I'm gonna say plug, I'm gonna say I'll put a rat was not the plug, but somebody to go to because when it was time to come down, we tried to buy 50 joints from that nigga, he couldn't even serve us. So I wouldn't even call that a plug. He was the limit only getting 33 joints. We was trying to buy 50 from the rat ass nigga. He couldn't even serve us. But the Columbia nigga, that was the plug. Hey, yo, now, is we know this might be a touchy subject, man. We know how close your relationship was with Tank, man. But can you tell the people how Tank was killed and, and, and some of the circumstances surrounding that incident? He got killed, basically, over jealousy and hate about Al Poto Rhett and Big Ed Gary. Also got killed, though, the main reason was two hoes, you did, which was Dre Girl, Michelle at that time, and Big Ed Gary, baby mother, Caprice. And we cut... I'll put a rent off one day because he couldn't serve us. We tried to get 50 joints from him, he couldn't serve us. So we had cut him off. So from that point on, um, he kept beeping us, putting different numbers in. We was like, nah, that shit too high, nigga. So um, he seen my nigga Dre, girl Michelle at the, um, at the pool party, and turned around and tried to talk to her. And, and she was like, nah, I'm engaged, just that and that. Big A. Gary, you know my um, fiance. Big A. Gary say, fuck that nigga. So Michelle came home and told 
Oh, my nigga Dre, what happened? So my nigga Dre was like, man, Big Ed Gary with that shit, I'ma fuck that bitch. And I'ma show them niggas you don't need no money to fuck that bitch. So I'm like, what you gonna fuck, Fuzzy? He was like, nah, I'ma fuck Big Ed Gary, bitch. Caprice. So I'm like, bet, put that dick in the hole. Long story short, it came out that Dre was fucking. She told Gary on some hating shit. But Gary was fucking with his uptown bra. So Gary was mad at Dre crying. So we met up with Gary one day down the carnival. Him and Dre was talking. He told Dre, man, to uh, stop fucking this bitch. He apologized for saying, fuck Dre. So they squashed it. It both been over with. Dre won't both to fuck the priest no more. I look at Dre I'm like, man, fuck her one more last time. Fuck it. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So Dre fucked the um whore one last time, and that was it. He cut her off. Now, Michelle get mad at my nigga Dre, cause Dre baby mother Keith is pregnant now. So Dre was like, yeah, she pregnant. You can't have no baby. So, you know, um, I still love you and marry you. So she went behind Dre back and cheated with Al Porterette. My nigga Dre found out, said that Michelle down. I was like, check this out. If you go over there again, man, stay over there. Because if that nigga out put a red under investigation, I don't want them to get on our tail because of you. And you over there with your BMW and your car. So Michelle went on underground, went hiding. I ain't come out of nothing. So um, Poe missed that pussy in here, whatever he was doing to it. He missed it. So Caprice mad at Dre, my nigga Dre, because Dre ain't fucking her no more. So she go back and tell Gary she pregnant by my nigga Dre, which was a lie. So... He called Poe crying. He still fucking my girl. He told me he wasn't gonna fuck my girl. Call that nigga. So Poe would beat Dre. Like, man, I got some shit. Woo, Dre was like, man, I'm gonna go ahead and grab it from you. Fuck it. Since our plug rolled out. I told my nigga Dre don't leave me. He left me anyway. And they put my nigga in a trick bag. Took like 250 or 300 from him or something. 275 or 375 from Dre. My nigga got killed in the back of a curve, man. He went to me, I'll pull the rat. And um, they put him in a trick bag. I told that nigga that day, don't leave him. I'm going with you. There's too much shit going on to meet them niggas by yourself. He okayed it. I got you, my nigga, and he left me anyway. I wish I was with him. Shit wouldn't have happened that way. If there'd been two of us, I would have my strap out. And they would have tricked my nigga like that. But the same token, my nigga didn't know what was going on because he wasn't fucking Caprice. The bitch Caprice was still lying on my nigga saying she was pregnant by him instead of that. My nigga wasn't fucking him. So he was blind to the situation. You know, it is what I got to respect the game. You know what I'm saying? I don't like the way it played out, but... Man, it is what it is, you know, and I shall finish the game. I'm still alive, I'm out here. You dig? So I shall finish the game. So the rumors that have been floating around for the past, I don't know, 25, 30 years that were saying that Alpo and one of his associates named Big Head Gary had something to do with it. Man, you know, like I said, man, you know, coming from Alpo to Rat, who the fuck ain't believe the shit he could say out of his mouth? You dig? He ain't credible, you know what I'm saying? Because he tell his story, not the whole motherfucking story, you dig? Or the truth to the whole situation or the matter. Like I said, I wasn't dead, so I don't know who pulled the trigger. So who the fuck know he didn't do it? How we didn't know he got in the car with my nigga and my nigga got in the back, he back door my nigga. Who who say that? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So and I damn sure ain't gonna believe that red ass nigga out for the rat. That nigga scumbag. So yo, is we know you a DC um native man and all that. Can you tell us about Rayful and how strong his grip over DC was during the 80s or did you ever meet or see him during your, your time? Yeah, um, I fuck with Lord Nut. You know, that's Ray for the Rat, so-called Lord Son. Nut, my motherfucking man. We grew up together, stole together, hit soda machines together, did everything. Like I said, like I said, I, I get a rat nigga his props as far as he had a strong crew. You know what I'm saying? A lot of motherfucking killers on his team. He made a rack of money. I can't take that from him. My opinion, man, he made more money than I know anybody in, in Washington, D.C. Through all my lifetime. They say that Mike Frank was a major player in the mid-80s. Did you ever meet him, or have you ever given a chance to interact with him? No, I never uh, met Frank. I seen him a couple of times in the clubs here and there, not too often, though. But as far as what I heard and know, real motherfucking live gangster. Had the whole Northwest pulling with him, the whole Northwest lover. He was a good man, you know, to get, for him to get tricked like that by somebody that he took care of and watched over and treat him like a son is fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I, don't, I really don't dig with that shit, that uh, betrayal shit. You know what I'm saying? How you gonna fuck with this nigga? Call him your best friend or your homie, then you crud ball the nigga out and kill him. That's some fucked up cruddy shit. I don't fuck with niggas like that. So, like I said, Frey got a lot of good men still out here. And hopefully, you know, when a rat pop out that hole, we gonna get dealt with, especially when we come back here, you dead? Now, is my next question is now, 
with Rayful gone, do you feel it created an opening for the likes of guys like Frey, Alpo, and others? Do you think that Alpo would have been able to do his thing in DC if Rayful was still around? I'm gonna speak on Frey, RIP, real motherfucker, OG, you did, I respect them. What people don't fella realize, Frey older. Frey been getting money way before Ray for even known of. Way, let's put that, let's get that shit straight for motherfuckers don't know Frey, don't know what DC about. That nigga been getting money, had uptown lock before Ray was even Ray, before anybody know Ray. You did, so Frey been like that. Had the whole Northwest lock. Everybody still love him back then, they still love him now. R.I.P. Ray was getting it, he had the city locked. Niggas that was fucking with him, but at the same token, we wasn't fucking with Ray. We still was getting it. And niggas ain't know we was getting it, you know what I'm saying? Like that. So, like I said, when we opened our hand up to our Porter, Ray couldn't even serve us. So, I don't know where that rumor come from about Ray got locked up, the city was starving, and luckily Poe came down. I don't know who the fuck made that dumb ass shit up. Never that. His niggas had money already. It was a cracker. Um, far as if Al Porter Red would have been still moving the way he moved, if Ray was on the scene, I don't know because Ray had his group of niggas who he was fucking with, who they were serving. You feel me? And um, I really can't answer that for real because, like I said, Poe ain't know nobody when he can. He he, he ended girls introducing them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? So. Who knows? I really can't answer that. I'll give you a straight up answer for that. I ain't gonna speak on nothing I really don't know about too much, so. Now, is it was rumored that Alpo was scared of Frey. And it was also said Frey had a hit list of people he wanted to get out of the way. Alpo's name was rumored to be on that list. Allegedly, Alpo and Wayne Perry paid someone from Frey's own clique to kill Frey. Allegedly, the cat was named uh, Michael Jackson. Did you ever um, hear of this dude, or is there any truth to that rumor? I heard the same rumor before, you dig? I ain't really fuck with Frey, really no Frey. I know of Frey, you dig? And um, I know a couple of dudes my age that hanging around Frey, you know, doing a little shit for Frey here and there, but I really can't speak on that situation. As far as MJ, I heard of MJ. You know, MJ from around my way, around Trinidad, you dig? I seen him a few times, you know, spoke with him a few times, and that's about it, really, so... Um, as far as the situation on Frey having it hit on Al Polterette and all that, I really don't know. When you used me Al Polterette, it was strictly business. Here you go, give us some bread, give us our shit. He might ask a question or something. Y'all going out tonight? Ooh, yeah, we might go and that be it. No more, no less. You dig so far as what Frey had going on, him and Al Polterette situation, I don't know. I heard the same rumors too, but I can't say it's true. I can't say it's not true. Now, you said that there was a rumor that um, Pookie had bumped into um, Wayne Perry in the bullpens in the feds and there was supposed to be an altercation. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Now, the dude, uh, Michael Frey, nephew name is um, Poochie. I don't know I said Moochie, I meant to say Poochie. And I heard he ran into uh, WP in a bullpen that was the feds or state. I mean, it might have been the state, I'm not sure. But he ran the WP in the bullpen that was over DC jail. Or down Central Cell Block, I don't know which one it was. The rumor was that uh, Poochie ran into WP and, and knocked his ass out. Then I heard WP came out of the room. I was weak, I was jerking off early. Some old wild Bama shit, but I don't know how true that is, neither. So that's what I heard, you dig? But Poochie got killed. He came on and Poochie got killed on White House Square on the Maryland side. So I don't know how true the room is, but that's what I heard. Now, being that you said that you really didn't have a connection with Frey, you, you might have seen him out and about. What was your feelings when you already had got killed? What was the vibe in the city, man, after that? Like I said, man, um, when I heard it, even though I ain't know him, but I'm a true believer of friendship, you feel? If, man, you got a friendship, man, we got to bond together no matter what. I was already taught, man, you don't kill your friend over no money or no bitch, over no pussy. You did, that's their pussy. If they want to give the pussy to the next nigga, or your father, or your son, that's their pussy. That's their, they got a right to. Females hustle niggas like we hustle or anything else. So, you know, hey man, that's their pussy. As far as over money and all that, I don't think, money can be made again. You have everybody take losses, ups and downs. You kill your man over some money. I don't think that shit never works. I don't give a fuck if he stole from you. If you your friend, that's your friend, true friend, y'all going from the sandbox, it ain't worth killing over no motherfucking money. 
that you're going to be replaced. You can't replace that man and that friendship no more once you smash the man. You know what I'm saying? So the city was fucked up. The whole Northwest was fucked up at them. You know, like I said, a lot of niggas probably wanted to get at them niggas, but the same token, um, them niggas don't hang out on no street corner where you just gonna ride up and get at them niggas. Like I said, them niggas, like me, I don't do no street corner. A nigga got to call and say, I see him here. And hopefully by the time you get there, I'm still there. So like vice versa, them niggas couldn't really be a test because they sticking and moving. Now is now another known fact is that um, Alpo had met Wayne Perry through um, through a 15 year old kid named Shorty Pop. Did you ever have any run-ins with Shorty Pop? And was he as deadly as they say he was? Yeah, I know um, Shorty Pop. He used to play for a Go Go Band back in the day. I had a run-in with him one time. On some wild bullshit. We was at a skate ring and shit. We was fucking with some Southeast niggas over Eastgate. We were serving them. They was hustling on our block and shit. But anyway, long story short, apart from Southeast, we used to hang with some niggas. My niggas around 18th and D and all that. I grew up to school with all the 18th and D niggas. We grew up as cool. Everybody my age, we used to go to stealing and all that old shit. And up back in Jamal. So, you know, we cool. I was cool with them. They was cool with me and all that. Everybody my age. So we up to Crystal Skate one day. The Southeast niggas up there. My 18 VD niggas and all them was beefing with the Southeast niggas that we were serving, that we was fucking with. So, I think one of the Southeast niggas came and got me. I went over there, all of my 18 VD niggas like, what's up, y'all cool, these my niggas, I'm fucking with them, they, they, they selling my shit, you know, this, that, and that. So I got the rapping to them and shit. I turn around, boop, niggas steal me, right? <laughs> This shit funny. wasn't funny when I got the shit stolen on me. It's funny now. So we turn around and I'm like, fuck them niggas. We get the rumbling. So we got the rumbling. Uh, we got the rumbling them niggas. This, that, and that. And Pop was the leader of them niggas. Or well, he was running the show back then. So um, the next two days, I guess he asked who the fuck I was. They're like, man, that's Lil Spock. Is this, that, and that? Is Dre, man? He got a girl to call Dre. He came around our way and met Dre. He was like, man, that's your man. You know, we beef with the Southeast niggas. He intervened with that shit. I ain't know where he was. This, that, and that. Ba 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 ba. So Dre got on my shit like, nigga, you trying to play peacemaker, nigga. I said, but I knew the niggas, 18 with these niggas. The other niggas hustling around our way. I was trying to squash the beef, nigga. Shit, I know the 18 them, my niggas. We grew up together. He said, man, that shit's old school shit, nigga. It's different times now. Y'all was cool in elementary. Y'all still cool, but if niggas beefing, nigga, you can't be trying to squash nothing, nigga. Man, get the fuck out of the way. So I was mad at Dre for telling me that, but the same token, I was, he was right. You know what I'm saying? So... Shorty Pop talking to Dre came over. The Dre called me over there. We shook hands, squashed that shit, this, that, and that. And that was the end of that. I heard um, Al Porter Red and WP he became cool through Lil Pop. So, long story short, them niggas locked up. I go in and come home, do my little fake ass bit. I run into Pop up uh, the classics. So, Pop, like, um, man, what's up, man? You know, I like, ain't shit, what's up with you, Slim? Like, man, you know, um, I ain't on that bullshit no more, that robbing, I ain't on that bullshit no more. I said, man, you know, I ain't never knocking hustle. Niggas gotta do what they gotta do, you dig? So we were like, man, I'm looking for this little nigga, Biggie from around our way. He ducking us, you know I said? I know Biggie. He gave me his number, but he ain't trying to fuck with me. That nigga gave me his number, this, that, 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 boo, boo, this, boo, that. So I'm like, man, um, yeah, man, it is what it is, man. Niggas ain't trying to fuck with you. Man, as though you was running wild with um doing you, niggas ain't trying to fuck with you for real like that. He like, man, I changed, man. Fuck with me, man. This, that, and that. So check this out, homes. For real, for real. Like I said, man, I ain't tripping off nothing happened in the past. Give me your number. I'm going to call you when I'm ready. You know, he was like, all right, bet, man. Don't fake. I said, check this out, homes. If I ain't going to call you, nigga, I wouldn't ask for you. I wouldn't even take your motherfucking number, Slim. Come on, man. I said, don't, don't, don't do me like that, homes. He's like, all right, bet. Spock is. He is just telling that. So, um, long story short, I finally called him a week later because this is what I was doing. My nigga Dre told me to do this. And niggas come home, they fucked up. Don't front them nothing. Give them something. I'm like, why the fuck would you give a nigga some free shit, nigga? He said, think about this, E. If you front a nigga something, if they fuck the money up or don't got all the money, they duck you. And then you ain't gonna be able to get that neighborhood locked. By giving them niggas something, you tell them bring everybody in the neighborhood to you, but they go through him. Go through the dude, whoever you fucking with. I'm like, that's smart as shit. He say, that's the way you'll get that whole neighborhood to come fuck with you. But they don't even know. So cool. I still took his morals and principles on and carried it on as far as if nigga come home, need some help, I give him a 62. Go ahead, get on your feet, nigga, or I might take you, give you a 62 and tell you, go ahead about your business, nigga, have some fun, you just come home. Hit a couple of $500 or a thousand. Go do you, nigga. When you finish, just come back and holler at me. So that's what I was doing to niggas. I cook up some shit. 
and whip it up. I probably have like a quarter or half a joint to give out free to niggas just come home that's fucked up so I can get their neighborhood to buy shit from me through the individual. So, you know, I finally called Shorty Park probably a week later and met up with him. I ain't on no bullshit, fuck myself. Like I said, so I ain't tripping over that you gotta do what you gotta do. So I gave him a deuce. And go ahead and do you, nigga, you got some money. Man, he ain't got no money or nothing. I gave him $500 or a stock or something. Gave that shit to him, he rolled out. So I said, this is what I'm gonna do. We just came home. Every time I get some shit and whip it up, I'm gonna add you to the list of the niggas I got that just come about to come home and come home. I got you. So I did that shit like three different times. That was it. So the last shit I gave him, I'm like, Slim, I'm gonna give you this deuce. From here on out, you gotta bring the Southeast niggas to me. Or you gotta hustle that shit and come and buy from me on now. He's like, oh, I bet. So of course, he tried to get some guns from me, but I never get niggas guns. It'd be the same gun you give a nigga they use against you. So I give niggas no gun. He kept asking for guns. I ain't got no guns. I got the guns I got. I need. I can't give you no gun. So after that, I ain't hear from him for a minute. So I'm like, I ain't, I ain't tripping. I ain't know that shit was extra shit. I whipped up anyway. I ain't tripping. So I get a call one day from him saying, buy me a car. I said, man, I'll buy you a car, so man, man, you got me fucked up. I ain't buying you no car, Slim. You ain't my baby mother, I buy my baby mother and bitches cars. Man, who the fuck you talking to, shawty? This, that, and he went on, and he went on, and went on, and went on. So I just checked this out, man, I ain't gonna play these games over the phone, nigga. Like I said, I said what I said, you said what you said, nigga, I don't buy no niggas no cars. I buy bitches cars, my baby mother cars, nigga. I said, I don't know what type of time you think you on, but you got the wrong nigga. I ain't no little boy back in no 82 and all that old shit, nigga. I'm a grown ass man. I says all that other shit you talking about, like I said, man. I hollered to me, they don't even call me no more, nigga. All right, man, when I see you, I just hung up on him, that was it. So I ain't see nigga no more. Somebody called me and told me he was at the classics one night. So I'm like, I'm gonna go up there and holler at him and shit. You know what I'm saying? Face to face, like a man. By the time I got up there, he was already smashed. The nigga smashed him and punched him. So I got up there, there was police and shit all out there, taped up. I couldn't get that. So what the fuck happened? I said, man, this killed Shorty Pop. They fucked him old, man. The nigga with the K. This many times, like, God damn. So after that, I rolled out and that was it. So um, well, I ain't had no more dealings with him or her, nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? As far as who smashed him and he get back, I don't know. But like I said, man, you know, I heard he was putting in work. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how many niggas he killed. I ain't never hear he killed a rock of motherfuckers, but I heard he was out here robbing and distorting niggas, but the niggas he was doing it to, I don't know them. He from the South Side, from the Northeast, but. That's the only running that I had with Charlie. So far as his name being hyped up, I don't know. I don't know his background on how many niggas he smashed, how many niggas he was going purring and all that old shit. Was, I don't know that. Is man, who was um who was Fat Rodney, man? You ever meet him? I'm not familiar with him, but um the people want to know, man. Who was Fat Rodney, bro? Fat Rodney from Northwest. Um, I used to see him at the go-go all the time. You did. I really ain't know him personally. I seen him a lot. You know, spoke to him here and there, but really no conversation, you know, like, but from back then, he was a good dude, known dude, well respected, was getting that bag, you feel me, and um, he was loved by a lot of people, especially up in Northwest, where we're actually from. Yeah, he was getting that money, you dig, and um, he was a fly motherfucker dressing, had his Range Rover and shit, and he was rapping too, though, so he was a rap, he was starting to rap with the go-go bands and shit, joining on niggas through the rap. And um, I used to love to go to Go-Go and watch him, him and DC Scorpio rap battle over the Go-Go beats and shit. That shit was funny as shit, you dig? But um, good man, I can't say nothing bad about him. He got killed, you know what I'm saying? So they was fucked up about that, but they don't know who killed them. There was a lot of rumors who he did it, he did it, but I wasn't in that circle. So I really don't know the story or the history of um, who killed them or whatever that, how that goes. This is another um, fact that was also public information that, you know, you've heard in previous interviews that um, Alpo had formed a friendship with a guy named Little Gary, a.k.a. Big Head Gary, who was from D.C. Now, in 1990, Alpo and Gary allegedly, they say, murdered Rich Porter. Did you know Gary and um, what type of dude was he like? Gary the same thing, according to Alpo, the rep that Big Head Gary killed Rich, you know what I'm saying? Once again, on that snake, your own friend shit, I don't agree with that shit. So Al Porto Red did that suck ass snake shit to Rich on some hate and jealousy ass shit, it's fucked up. As far as Gary, I really didn't interact with Gary like that. Gary went to a private school, public school, I mean a private Catholic school or something. So I know he's quiet, he go out but not, don't go out too much. I really ain't talk to the nigga all like that to fill his courage out and hang around the nigga like that. It was more like 
If we see the nigga, what's going on, Slim? Hey, hey, what's up? We all going here tonight. We might go there. I might go there. That's about it. No more, no less. That's all I can say about the little big head nigga. He's short, got a big head, got a small man complex. As far as that murder shit, that wasn't him. So, I don't know where that shit, murder shit come from. That wasn't him, but I guess that pussy make you do anything. A nigga kill you over a bitch and a piece of pussy before he kill you for fucking with him. I don't know. Now, is there was rumors floating around that Gary was planning on double-crossing Paul over a big drug deal. Then, allegedly, Paul had Gary killed by Tyrone Price. Now, who was said to be an associate of Wayne Perry? Do you know of this um, Tyrone Price individual? Yeah, I heard the same story, you dig. So, I don't know if it's true or not, but eventually, Big Ed Gary did get killed. As far as the dude that smashed Big Ed Gary, I don't know old time. I don't know old school. That nigga, like, 10 years older than me, I don't know. I never heard of him. But, you know, I guess he was a part of WP team. I guess but when that time came, he smashed Big Ed for WP or whatever the reason was. But, you know, according to Alpo the Rep, that was the reason. And I heard the same reason in the streets, too, before Alpo the Rep even uh, mentioned it. Now, yo, Ez, back in 91, there was a cat from from, uh, from Brooklyn named Demencio Benson. He was shot and killed in D.C. during the basketball game. Now, you being in D.C., did you hear about that incident? And um, give us your thoughts. Yeah, I heard about the incident. Took place, yeah. Um, I heard Demencio was a good dude. A lot of D.C. niggas fucked up with him and liked him. Real good dude down to earth. Played more than fed with motherfuckers. I asked him cool with one of his homeboys from New York. I ain't gonna say his name, but that's my motherfucking nigga. We be talking, nigga, rapping, and I see him often, you dead. But, um, yeah, I heard about the situation, fucked up the situation about that. All I can say is, man, this should be over a bitch. You think I heard it was over a bitch? Because he knew I'll pull the rap girl from the bay wife. And Poe told him stop speaking to her, some old wild Bama shit. So he like, man, get the fuck. I knew her from school. That's what the words was. That's what I heard it was over. You know what I'm saying? Once again, these tender dick ass niggas keep killing over some pussy that ain't even theirs. You dig? Them niggas might want to cut their dick off and get a pussy they self. They want to control the pussy that motherfucking badge, you dig? God damn. But anyway, um, it's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Another good man gone on a strip of a piece of pussy that's not neither one of theirs, you dig? And the bras moved on, still taking dick from other niggas, moved on with their life. And yet, man lost his life over some pussy. You dig? Or another nigga take a man life over some pussy. It's fucked up. These good men down over pussy. But you know, man, it is what it is. Like I said, at the end of the day, man, it is what it is. That's the part of the game. You know, DC and New York always had like a kind of like rocky relationship, so to speak. In the Miss T interview, they spoke on a guy named Daddy and another guy named Hector that was down in Washington, D.C. They was getting money in D.C. and they lost their life out there. So I just want you to explain, you know, a lot of guys go out of town and go to these different cities not understanding the politics of the city. And I checked out her interview and shit. My job, like, like the female. I like her style, I like her mentality. You did? And um, she also confirmed what I was telling y'all in one of my interviews as far as um, female hustle dudes and niggas and drug dealers like niggas hustle. The drugs, clothes, or whatever they doing. You dig? She made sure that she stayed with a top nigga. And I ain't talking about no flunky niggas. She always fuck with their head, not their help. She managed to live through all that shit, you dig? And I respect her. You know, I, I say, man, she gangster. She gangster, you dig? I fuck with her, I respect her, you dig? And I'm also going to go into um, the dude, dude that got killed that she was talking about in New York, the Spanish dudes. I really didn't know them. But um, back then, when the two Spanish dudes got killed that she was talking about, D.C. was really beefing with New York dudes, heavy. You know, D.C. niggas got tired of New York dudes coming down and setting up shop, so it was all on beef. You can't come down and set up shop no more, you dig? And we weren't going for that shit no more. All my D.C. niggas from Northwest to Southeast, Southwest, and Northeast was putting in work. If you want a good New York nigga playing fair or thorough, you weren't allowed to be down here no more. Niggas were putting that pistol on you, robbing you, putting you in a casket, sending you back up top. That beef went on for a minute, and like I said, the time went on, the few good men that was allowed to stay in Death City, they stayed. You dig? And I got one motherfucking man in particular, my motherfucking main man. You dig? He was a friend of Demencio, you dig? And a um, real strong man, stand-up man. Drug dealer, straight killer. Y'all might know my man Devine, he's from out of Brooklyn. 
You know, he go hard and shit. He's still alive. He out here doing well. He's still a man. Still stand on this principle. You dig? He was one of the few of the New York dudes, my nigga, that stayed down there and handle that. And was allowed to stay. That's my nigga. You dig? So he was one of the main motherfuckers that was respected and stayed down in Washington. Be from us and the New York dudes, also with a beefing with us ourselves, we made, you know, DC the murder capital back in 89 to 91. Man, tell us what, what's going on right now in 2019, man. I know that was, you had a clothing line. Like you say, this shit ain't to be glorified. It was in the past, you lived through it, but at the same time, I'm talking about all my old heads that got stories and, and, and that are men that did a rock of time and came home. It's a time now, it's a new era where it's though you can take your story, man, and make something out of it. You know, get some, get paid off of it. You already risked your life for this shit. You did your time. You put in your work for this shit. You got paid back then, and you paid your debt to society by going on that slave plantation. So when you get out, why not get paid off the shit again? And make it into a book and a movie and do your thing, you dig? For all the young niggas out here, my young youth out here, man, trying to hustle and shit, that shit D-A-D, dead. Niggas gonna tell on you. Niggas talk that gangster shit and that killer shit. When them niggas get locked up and they look in their life and their baby mother come down in, you going away for life, 30 years? What about your son and daughter? I'm gonna tell them you did, they ain't got no father. You gonna leave them out there over us? Over for them? Fuck, you ain't doing this bit with you. Niggas gonna tell on you. Nine times out of ten more than none, them niggas gonna tell on you. To prevent you spending life in jail and being washed up. Don't even fuck around. Just look at the world right now. You got females working, got Benzes, pushing better than niggas. Benzes, BMWs. That's how they working, off the credit. In they name. That's it. You get your credit up, man. Don't fuck your name up. The, the government will give you that money or your, or your credit right. You take that credit, invest in real estate, get your own business, get your own detail shop, your own detail truck on wheels, get your own clothing line. You can get a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? The drugs ain't the way to go. I'm gonna keep it hunting. You know, you don't be an old fool like me. You know what I'm saying? But at the same token, I ain't no dummy. Dummy, dummy. And then I got a clothing line keeping the real sports. You know, um, I don't have a store set up yet because um, I be going back and forth from Miami to DC. I'm, all, I'm still moving all around. I ain't been based yet. I ain't set up a base yet, but um, I'm gonna some new gear next month. I'm gonna post it up online on YouTube and show y'all where y'all can get it from. And I appreciate y'all supporting the real live gangster, you know what I'm saying, OG. But once again, for the youth, man, don't do it. Reconsider. You know, that Andre 3000 say, go read some literature. You did Prophet Noble Jolly. You know, Furcon, get your mind right. You know, find out what your nationality is. Know who you are, where you came from. At the same token, get your own business. You ain't got to come out here and work for nobody. We've been taught. Don't go work for a motherfucker. No. We got to challenge what we've been taught. You know, you go out, get your own business. And you get motherfuckers to work for you. You dig? It is what it is. We say we, we, it is going to be hard for us because like the so-called blacks, youth, felonies, they're going to be hard for us. But at the same time, it's networking. If you know somebody that know somebody that got a job or got a plug, far as legit, then they'll plug you. The same shit we put in the street shit, working on plugs, trying to get plugs, put that energy in something positive, and you have a good outcome. You did. The credit is the way. You know, my credit score 815. I ain't bragging on nothing but motherfuckers don't even believe that. When I go and do business deals or do a hard money loan, they be like, man, who the fuck is this nigga? Because I don't dress up in suits. I go as I am. I might put on some keeping the real shit with my Tims or my Red Bombs or my Deceptives. I go in, who the fuck is him? I'm me. My, my name is Woo 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 Woo. It's him? Yeah, it's me. Because they judging me how I look. You know what I'm saying? That's why I always say don't never judge a book by its cover because you can get tricked. I like used to out there, man, do the right thing, man, like Spike Lee always say. And um, young niggas out there, man, need some advice. Hit me inbox me on my um on my IG. Is the Christ. Man, I give you some knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Never would I turn anybody down for knowledge. I got a clothing line, keeping the real sports coming out. I post to let y'all know how to order my clothes, and I will shut up a shop in DC. And I might share that one in Houston. I got to rap to my homegirl. got a, a boutique in Houston. I got to rap and see what she's talking about. And also, um, I sell used cars. So a lot of youth can get used cars and resell them. Especially in tax time. Everybody looking for cars. You dig? 
I'm working on my movie, fully paid. It's a DC version of paid in full. I'm working on it slowly and shortly, but it's coming to y'all, I believe it. Y'all stay posted. I appreciate y'all for interviewing a real live gangster man. And um, y'all be up, y'all be easy. Hit me up. IG, Twitter, is the Christ. I even DC Finals Gangster. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Well, look, man, I want to thank you for your time, man. I want to thank you for blessing us, man, with your story, man, from your perspective, man. I'd like to, once again, I want to thank you for the history lesson you just gave the people, man. Is the Christ, man, representing the district, man. District of Columbia, man, that DMV, man. Appreciate your time, family. Peace.